All right, so welcome back to Decrypted Tech and inside of our lab. Today up on the bench we have uh, Gigabyte's, or one of Gigabyte's Z77 boards. This is going to be the Z77X-UD3H. Um, it is one of Gigabyte's lower end boards. You have the UD5 and some other boards that are above this one. But it's sort of your mainstream. It's going to be an entry level, just sort of a gateway into Gigabyte's line of Z77 boards. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got on the outside box that Gigabyte's trying to show off for you. Biggest thing, of course, is that it's going to support Ivy Bridge. It will support both Ivy Bridge as well as Sandy Bridge. It's going to support the K SKU CPUs, which means that it's unlocked. You can adjust the multipliers above what the stock is. Uh, there is some talk that on older boards that it's not, uh, you know, on some of the older P67 boards and Z, uh, Z67 boards, Z, excuse me, Z68 boards, that you're not going to be able to run Ivy Bridge fully unlocked. But we haven't tested that out, so we're not 100% certain that that's accurate. So let's go ahead and move on with what we've got here. Again, this is a Z77 chipset. It does support Ivy Bridge, so you have that full support there. You have PCIe Generation 3, which is nice if you have one of the newer graphics cards from either NVIDIA or AMD. You do have the full Virtu MVP support for this board. You have an M SATA slot on here, so you can drop in a 55mm uh, SATA uh, card for SSD caching. That's going to allow you to get some better performance if you're using a traditional magnetic storage uh, drive. Of course, you have support for SLI. You have your Ultra Durable 4, which is their fourth generation of the Ultra Durable line. That's one of uh, Gigabyte's big features. It's going to give you your high temperature protection, your humidity protection, based on the fact that they're running a different type of fiberglass that prevents moisture from getting in between the layers of the PCB. It's going to help improve the lifespan of the board as well as allow you to cool it a little bit more efficiently because you don't have moisture buildup inside there. You have uh, electrostatic discharge protection that's going to be built into the board and you have power failure protection which is kind of a normal feature that you see in a lot of other boards out there. But Gigabyte likes to point this out because it is a sort of something that they put a little bit more effort into. Of course you also have their 3D power and their 3D BIOS and they're all digital power engine and the dual UEFI BIOS which is nice. You have multiple BIOSes even on their the lower end of their mainstream board so that you can switch back and forth, set up one with an overclocking profile, you know, sort of get that feel even if you mess up one to where you can't boot into that one you can always switch to the other one and keep going. So let's flip around to the back of the box and see what we have. Uh, the back of the box is going to have a nice picture of the board. It's going to show off the major feature which is the M SATA. It's going to give you that better performance with your uh, hard drives and can even give you a little bit better performance with SSDs. From what we hear although we haven't had any direct experience with it and we have not seen any indication that that's going to be the case. So primarily it's for those of you using magnetic storage. We will be testing that out with a uh, you know, 750 gig, sort of an older style drive, uh, Seagate drive. So looking, again, you have your all digital power, your 3D power, which is going to discuss your different digital power functions. You have your VTT, your graphics, and your CPU, as well as memory. Those are all going to have digital power controllers. You're going to have your 3D BIOS, which we've talked about in depth, and we'll also show you exactly what the BIOS looks like on this board. And then you have just a listing of your ultra durable four functions down here across the bottom. And then down on the, uh, over here in the lower corner, you're going to have some additional items that are important, but they're not sort of like a hard sell item or something that would make you pick up this board. Uh, you have your HDMI 1.4, DVI, your DirectX 11 support, which is coming through the, process, the uh, graphics chip on the processor, SLI, Crossfire, on-off charge, and just some of the other things that they've already talked about. All right, so that wraps up what we've got here on the outside of the box. We're going to go ahead and get it open, pull the board out, show you what you get in the box, as well as show you what comes on the board. Okay, we've got everything pulled out of the box, so let's go over exactly what you get inside. Of course, you're going to get a manual. It's going to tell you exactly what you can and can't do with this board. It's going to give you the information on the BIOS, where the settings are, the pinouts of everything, so you like your front panel header. That's great. And just basically, it gives you information about the board. You have a driver's disk. If you don't have a driver's disk, you can still download all of these drivers and all of the utilities directly from Gigabyte's website. You have a multilingual installation guide, which is just going to walk you through the steps of how to put all the components on your board. You have some SATA 3 cables, some SATA 2 cables, a large SLI bridge, and you have your I.O. shield. This has a nice padding on the back, so it makes it a little bit more comfortable when you're putting it in your case. So that covers all of the stuff you get in the box with the exception of the motherboard. Now we're going to take a look at the motherboard. As usual it's got an electrostatic discharge bag or ESD bag around it. It's going to prevent you from, if you were unwise enough to touch this board with static built up in your fingertips, it's going to help prevent damage to the board. Alright, 
So let's just take a quick look at the, you know, just the general layout of the board. The board is a black matte PCB, which we like. It's using that new material, which gives it this look, kind of almost as if it's got a, a layer over top of the surface. So the traces are not as visible as they would be on other motherboards. You can see them, but you can definitely tell that there's something over top of them. That's going to help prevent that electrostatic discharge, you know, from just hitting from your fingertips if you were to touch this board. Uh, you do have, you know, your typical RAM slots. You have your four over here. You have a nice large power button, you have a reset button, and you also have a CMOS reset switch. Those are going to be up here in the corner. Very nicely laid out. You have a 4-pin uh, PWM fan header that would work well if you wanted to throw a RAM cooler on here. And you have a USB 3.0 header that's going to come right off of the board. Another interesting feature is that you have a SATA-style power connector that's down here. That's going to provide extra power to the PCI E slots as well as to your M SATA port that's right here below where you have your CPU socket. Flipping around, let's take a look at uh, the way they have their power um, regulation controls here. You have some nice chokes, they're a, an alloy, and then you also have your voltage regulation that's under here. It's under a smaller heat sink, so you are going to want to make sure that you have good airflow across this, otherwise this is going to build up some pretty good heat. If you were to use a water cooler or a self-contained cooler, you might want to consider putting a fan here or maybe even some sort of a duct to, just to make sure that you get a lot of airflow through this to keep your power regulation cool. You have your 8-pin auxiliary power header that's up here. With this being folded over, you're very, you're unlikely to cut your fingers or, you know, remove some thumb skin, which we've done in the past many times setting these boards up. All right, one departure that we've seen on this board already is that your CMOS battery is up here close to the CPU socket. Normally they're down here or even in between the PCIe slots. So let's take a look now at the peripheral slots here. This does support SLI. You can see here's your, going to be your main SLI slots. This is going to be a full PCIe X16 slot. This is going to be PCIe X8, and this is going to be X4. You can tell that by flipping this over and taking a look at the back. You can see this is your full X X16 slot. Here's your X8, and here's your X4. That's by your electrical pinouts. If you don't have this, there's no possibility of getting a full X16 through it. Here, you can see that they've only pinned it out for X8. So that's all you're ever going to get out of that slot no matter what kind of card you put in there. Even if you use that as your only slot, it's only going to be X8. You have three X1 slots and of course an old generation uh, 2.1 PCI card. You have a uh, port for TPM. Again, we want to remind everybody this is 20 plus 1 pins. So you'll need to make sure that you have a 20 plus 1 pin module as well as it needs to be TPM 1.2. All right, you can see that they've gone with all solid capacitors on here, which is nice. It's going to give you quite a bit better product life than the traditional paper style capacitors. And then just your basic over, uh, you know, taking a look along the bottom, you have your USB ports 1, 2, and 3. This is going to be for USB 2.0. You have some LEDs for diagnostics. You also have your front panel header. And then you have your clear CMOS jumper, which is right there. So Gigabyte has given you a fairly nice heat sink for the PCH, the Z77 PCH that's down here. This is where we take our cooling from. What we do is we generally we run our, our thermometer across here. We go from the edge, we go from edge to edge and then back during both idle as well as during, uh, you know, under load conditions. And that's going to give us a general, an average of what this is as we take the temperature across several points through here to tell you what this is actually, what this temperature is rather than use an internal sensor or some sort of software which could read the sensor wrong. It'll give you the exterior sensor uh, temperature of this. All right, let's flip it around one more time. We've already covered the power port here. We also have six SATA ports. And if you look, you can see this is a SATA 2 port 5. It says SATA 2 port 5 will be disabled when using mSATA. So that means if you've got something in here, you're not using this port here, which, which is this uh, top port. So that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. You have four uh, SATA 2 and two SATA 3. Not a bad setup, especially for the price point that this board is supposed to run at. Qu taking a quick flip around here, you see that you have six USB 3.0 slots directly on the back of the board. This is going to come from the VIA. If you look right here, you'll see the VLI. That's actually a VIA USB 3.0 hub that sits on there. It acts as a hub for the chip, so you run one in, you get four out. So that's how we're able to replicate this out. They do have multiple USB 3.0 controllers on here. One is going to come from the Z77 PCH and the other is going to come from another controller, which is either going to be NEC or possibly AS Media, which all the, we don't necessarily think that because that tends to be an ASUS only one. But there are several other companies that will manufacture the USB 3.0 uh, 
controllers. All right, flipping back, you see you do have DVI, VGA, you have DisplayPort, and you have HDMI. You also have a couple of powered uh, SATA, eSATA ports, a standard Realtek LAN port, your typical audio out, and your digital optical, uh, optical out there, as well as a PS2 combination keyboard mouse switch. So that pretty much covers all the features on the Gigabyte Z77X UD3H motherboard. We're now going to throw it up on our bench, drop in our Core i7-3770K, and see what kind of performance we can get out of it. We're also going to try and get uh, reclaim our 55mm 32GB SSD that we have that uses the uh, microSATA port there, and we'll see if we can start testing some of that, uh, th that functionality with, like we said, one of our older uh, uh, magnetic platter S uh, HDDs. All right. As always, if you like this video, click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friend and be sure to uh, subscribe to, so you can keep up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.